In 2010, a 77-year-old man confronted drug traffickers who wanted to strip him of his ranch in Tamaulipas. The story now serves as inspiration for a Franco-Belgian graphic novel. The story of determination and aplomb, but above all the courage of Don Alejo Garza Tamez, has been of great inspiration to all, and not only in Tamaulipas or the rest of Mexico. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, in this video, we will talk about Don Alejo Garza Tamez, who fight in the most notorious and violent cartel in Mexico to defend her land. But before we continue, thank you guys for all your support, I will do my best, to give this kind of content to all of you. So without further ado, let's get started. Don Alejo Garza Tamez was born in 1933 in Alinda, Nuevo Leon, a timber worker by trade, he with his brothers, secured a successful lumberyard in the state capital, Monterrey, known as El Salto. At a time when unoccupied lands were available for reasonable prices, Don Alejo purchased 2,000 hectares near a dam adjoining the municipalities of Gumez and Padilla in the neighboring state of Tamaulipas, the ranch would generate revenue through fishing, agriculture, and livestock. Don Alejo based himself and his business practices in Monterrey, but his life revolved around his ranch home, which he named San Jose after his father, Jose Garza. Don Alejo particularly enjoyed hunting. In a nation that observed tight gun laws, Don Alejo managed to secure permits with the Secretary of National Defense to own hunting rifles. Don Alejo acquired hundreds of hunting trophies in his lifetime, but his pride and joy lay with his family, wife, Leticia Torrijo, and daughters Marcella and Alejandra. In the late 2000s, open war broke out between the notorious Las Zetas cartel and their parent organization, the Gulf Cartel. In Tamaulipas, once busy highways became notorious for narcos preying on victims for ransom. These extortion rackets soon extended out to farmers and ranchers throughout the region. Narcos of any given cartel would enforce protection taxes on farms and ranches to fund their operations. At other times, they would confiscate properties to turn them into training and command centers. The penalty for refusal was the execution of the owner and their immediate family. Every ranch and farm became prized real estate for the drug cartels, and it was only a matter of time before one set their sights on the San Jose Ranch. On the afternoon of November 13, 2010, gunmen associated with the notorious Zetas Z cartel approached Don Alejo on his ranch. Speaking directly with Don Alejo, they issued simple demands, vacate the premises within 24 hours or else. After the narcos departed, Don Alejo immediately summoned his workers. All were asked to leave, release the livestock, and take whatever souvenirs they could. All workers departed as instructed. As the sole individual on the property, Don Alejo went to work. Throughout his main home, he took every firearm at his disposal, from pistols to high-powered rifles, and placed them strategically near windows and doorways. With nightfall looming, Don Alejo hunkered down for the night in blue pajamas and awaited the Z's, but not before making one last call. He spoke with his wife Leticia for the last time over the phone and asked about their daughters, Marcella and Alejandra. Not disclosing the events that unfolded hours before, Don Alejo gave his blessings to Leticia, and said he would call the following morning, si Dios quiere, are God's willing. It will likely never be known what truly happened during the night of November 13-14, but bits of information has been pieced together over the years. Reportedly, a convoy of trucks belonging to the Z's approached the San Jose Ranch between 3 to 5 a.m. Once in position, the narcos fired warning shots into the air and dismounted. One shouted that they had come to claim ownership of the ranch and whoever remained must come out with their hands up. From the farm's main home, a shot rang out. The Z's had walked into an ambush. One by one, narcos began falling. Soon, the ranch exploded in gunfire. What was supposed to be an easy takeover turned into an hours-long battle. Unable to stifle the unseen gunmen from the house, the Z's switched to their grenade launchers. Their points of impact would be seen by police the next day. During the fray, 
The Zs managed to gain entrance to Don Alejo property. The shots became sporadic afterward. Inside the house, everything of value, furniture, televisions, appliances, had been hit or grazed by passing bullets. But the Zs found only one person instead of several. Laying in the doorway of his bathroom was Don Alejo Garza Tamez, felled by bullet wounds to the chest and the head. Whether he died from battle or execution remains unclear. He lay surrounded by his prized rifles, pistols, and ammunition boxes. Bullet holes were still smoking when police arrived in the early morning hours of November 14. The narcos had withdrawn, leaving behind four dead and two injured. Over 1,000 spent shell casings littered the property. After combing the ranch, a Navy commando officially declared Don Alejo Garza Tamez dead. One worker, Joaquin Estrada, who later oversaw operations on the property, would be the first one informed of his boss's fate. His family would learn the truth shortly afterward. I hope you like this video, and also don't forget to subscribe, and if you want, stories, or any suggestions, feel free to comment. May God bless to all of you, have a great day, and see you, in the next video.